Whew. Bloody hell, hot today. Time for a drink break. Cool off a little bit here in the park and reapply some sunscreen. Crazy, crazy grasshopper here. Let's see if I can capture him. Not capture him, capture him on film. Okay, got the sun screen on, ready to go. And I just realized while I was sitting here at this park, I'm actually right next to uh, it's the flower market, the massive flower market. The flower market here is considered to be one of the largest in the entire world. So I'm going to do a market tour video, all the markets around uh, the Sampan Tawong area. If we're very strict on the district boundaries, the flower market is actually not in the Sampan Tawong area, it's north of that. So I'll see how many, I'll see whether I've got room for it in the video. If not, it will be in a future video, the flower market, because it's really impressive. Uh, more impressive at night time, so it's, I'll, I'll capture a little bit of footage as I'm walking around, but uh, it deserves a, probably a video on, on its own, because it, it's an amazing place, that flower market. So it's all within this same area of the Memorial Bridge and the uh, Rama One Monument. Whenever I sit in a public park, I do have a look around, make sure, make sure I, oh, actually have a bit of a sniff to make sure no one's done a pee. I'm always a bit wary of that, particularly after seeing that, that dude uh, taking a leak just before. But this, this nice little spot here passed the uh, smell test. Uh, and coincidentally, uh, I looked up and there's some beautiful yellow trees. Uh, sorry, not yellow trees, but trees with these beautiful yellow flowers that are in bloom at the moment. So I had a quick look it up, look up uh, on Google as to what these flowers were, uh, and they're called the cassia, the cassia fistula, and really, really quite striking, really nice. They're all around this uh, King uh, Rama One Park. So uh, they're also known as the scrambled egg tree. And they're very common in Asia, Southeast Asia. Also known as the golden shower. <laughs> the golden shower tree. So I'm sitting beneath a golden shower. Speaking of urination. Okay, I'm walking now to Ratchawong Pier. Uh, so I'm heading towards the Gulf of Thailand with the along the magnificent Chow Phraya River and I tell you what distinct smell of urine along here uh, I used the expression before which was introduced to me to my wife I don't know how popular it is in Thailand but if one is to take a whiz in public she calls it shooting the rabbit so I think there's a quite a few <laughs> few dudes who've been shooting the rabbit along here and the sun's now, ah, I'm not gonna go into detail. I think you get the picture. That there looks like an excellent spot for an evening drink on the Chow Phraya River. I'm gonna definitely bookmark that one in uh, Google Maps. That looks excellent, that spot. I could do the Ong An in the evening. I could come and look, uh, watch the sunset, uh, either from here or from uh, the Chow Phraya Sky Park Bridge. We could even catch one of the boats, we've got the long tail boats coming down here now. Or well, we've got the new uh, electric, electric ferry, which is just emerging now from under the uh, Rapoklau Bridge. Yeah, it's a good spot. I'm coming back here in the night time. So as I mentioned earlier, I am right here on the border of the Pranakon district and the Sampan Tawong district. So I'm actually thinking like this series now that I'm doing uh, is my plan is to focus on the Banrak district and the Sampan Tawong district and talk about history but also what it is today but even think about what's going what's to become in the future as well. Uh, so I'm doing a, this whole season, season two, 
is focusing on those two districts. Season three at this stage, I'm actually thinking about doing the Pranakon. Oh, it's cool, cool bike. Pranakon district, because that is all the, the, uh, the that's a, that's got a lot, there's a lot of jam, that's a lot jam packed into the Pranakon district, including uh, the Grand Temple, uh, the museums, the giant swing, Kaosan Road. Uh, so that, at this point in time, I'm thinking will be the next season of Luke's Walks, like season three Bangkok uh, video. So I'm, I've got that rattling around in the back of my mind. So that flower market, that would fit into that season two video series. So uh, that's something to look forward to in the future. when I was uh, trying to work out how I'm going to uh, create some of these videos but also learn more about Bangkok I was trying to I was trying to work out like how do I actually conquer this city like it's just so massive Bangkok has so much in so that's when I actually kind of after doing some research and started plotting a few different locations and thoughts where I kind of came up with the idea it's like well I could just focus on some districts and so the one that I figured is going to be the first one that I'm going to focus on is the Phan Rak district. Because uh, that really, I can really tap into some of that history uh, from that from the Chapri dynasty, the colonial period, right up to today. So that was the thought process of this uh, season, season number two of the Luke Walks journey. some reason around this Ratchawong here there's just loads of old cool old Vespers and they're the delivery uh, delivery guys around here so this is like uh, right next to the Chow Phraya River if you love old architecture interesting old buildings and cool old Vespers that are still in use and come to Ratchawong here area I'm at Ratchawong Pier here. Now, Ratchawong Pier had an important part to play in the history of Thailand, in particular immigration. So it was this Ratchawong Pier, which is at the end of Ratchawong Road, which is the gained access to Yarrow Rot Market, Chinatown. Uh, this is where people and goods used to be uh, transported. So from from the from the town, from Chinatown area, that that the goods would be. Uh, transported to this pier, Ratchawong Pier, and then out in the middle of the river, there'd be big cargo ships. So this would be the part, uh, the place where they could access those big cargo ships. Interestingly, as well, this was uh, uh, one of the main ways to get across the river for passengers and goods as well to get to the other side, the Thonburi side. Now, on the other side here is uh, Ding Dang area, which is considered uh, like Chinatown number two second Chinatown in in Bangkok here and even today as well now the last video I made was about uh, King Taxon and when I went to the King Taxon monument and there was a railway a small railway station area that that area a small railway station there that I visited that area around there that's considered Chinatown number two here in Bangkok so if you're keen to learn a little bit more about that you can check out the last video so in the post-World War II era, era this, uh, this area here was considered the hip and happening uh, part of town. So this is where all the uh, cool cats would hang out and uh, this was like the downtown area, the trendy area, the fashionable area. It's a little bit different today. However, you know what, if, we come, if you come back here another 10 years, 20 years, with all the new kind of cool cafes and uh, 
craft uh, shops that are opening up. But, um, I think this will, could very well have a resurgence and be one of the cool, where all the cool kids hang out. So here's a example of what it was like back in the King Rama 1, King Rama 2 days with the access from Ratchawong Pier going across the Chow Praya River to the Dindang area over there. is an important year in Thai history because this is when the Boer Ring Treaty was signed. Now what happened, it, the Siam Kingdom at the time uh, was basically uh, isolated from the rest of the world but the Boer Ring Treaty uh, allowed trade to with Thailand or Siam at the time to open up with other, other, other countries. So there was a significant change in 1855 when this treaty was signed. Uh, and it brought uh, CM out of isolation. Now the Raksha Wong Pier, which is just behind me, uh, became a really busy and important pier because the, there were some of the Chinese tycoons in the Sampang area. This, get, this gave them access to the river to, and uh, gave them access to steamships and access then to other countries. So opened up trade immensely uh, during this period of time and also exactly here at this location. It was also at this time that the, it was the, uh, the time when the steamship started replacing the Chinese junk. So that means passengers, they had, uh, uh, Bangkok then had access to Hong Kong and also to places like Singapore. So a lot of trade opened up at this time, plus a lot of immigration as well. So this was, this was such a busy, uh, busy area during that period of time. And then we and 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 Sampang, the Sampang Market, was a really key uh, key key location uh, in history at this time as well. So here's another example of one of these uh, spirit houses here at Ratchawong, Ratchawong Pier. So when I do the upcoming video, which is called the Temples, San Pan Tawong and Banrak Temples, I'll explain to you what these are all about. <laughs> 